Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Well, today I am here with my nephew, Kelvin, who is a technical god and he knows everything about 3D printers. This is the Hallett One 3D printer. It's a resin printer. I know nothing about resin printers, so that's why I have Kelvin here because he's played with it and he's made a pile of cool stuff. So Kelvin, the first question for you, what's the difference between an FDM printer and a resin printer? Well, just by looking at the printer right now, uh, probably the key difference that most people would think about, especially with regards to an FDM printer, would be the type of material that's being used. So in FDM printers, typically there's filament that's coming in as it's being melted on a base plate. With a resin printer, what we've got is the base plate that's inverted, so it's upside down. And from there, we're using liquid resin in sort of this vat pool. Show us something really technical that you've created with it so far. Well, I think this is sort of a good example of something that you would create uh, with a resin printer. And the reason why I pull it out is it's, it's a portion of a, of a blimp type piece. And so if we look at it from this perspective, we'd actually be building it from the base, the, the build plate up and building these supports along the way. And so once you have completed it, you pull it apart and you have your completed piece, but this is what you need to do in order to get there with all of the scaffolding essentially. So I'm gonna take this off because you just mentioned something just so the viewers know, because even I'm curious. So that portion was actually stuck to this plate? Yes. And it comes out of this liquid? Yep. Okay. And so it's built piece by piece. And so on an FDM printer, what you typically see is it's spinning around constantly trying to build up a, right, a particular right. piece where this every layer is cured at a time. And so as long as you have the support for it, all of those pieces are being done. It's relatively quick uh, with regards to an FDM printer, which may take, you know, something like this, it could take four hours. And I believe this took about two hours just because of the speed. You don't have to wait for the nozzle to spin around right. and, and heat up and so forth. But it looks like your area to print is limited by your, by this plate. So this, this plate looks like what, six inches maybe? Five inches, six inches? Yeah, yeah, probably six inches. It's about six inches by two and a half inches or so. So that's the area, max area you can print? Yeah. Okay. And then, of course, you're also limited by the Z-axis in terms of being able to pull it out. But not only that, um, you'll have you'll struggle potentially if it becomes too long with this lip on right. the resin vat that uh, when you're trying to take it off of the plate. So. Show us something really technical that was printed. I know earlier, I'm going to hand this to you because I, I looked at this and I was like, there's no way a 3D printer could make something like this. So this looks like something you'd put your plants in or whatever. It's just a little. Yeah, you could almost think of it as uh, a little speaker potentially. Yeah. Uh, it's got little very fine graded pieces. Uh, and uh, if we zoom in a little closer, you can see almost through it with these little translucent pieces. Uh, typically with an FDM printer, you wouldn't be able to get this kind of level of uh, complexity, um, just being able to put it all together because you'd need to be able to print layer by layer as opposed to the nozzle having to spin around in a circle. Okay, so that brings me to the next question then. Normally on this channel, since I am Captain Drone and it's all about drones, uh, when I had your father on, Nelson, he had a 3D printer and he made parts for drones. And when you came in, I said, hey, did you bring any parts for drones? And the answer was basically this material is not as solid. And you said, here, feel it. It feels kind of soft. Is that because it takes so long to cure? Yeah. So with this particular product, um, there's usually a separate product that you can purchase. It's okay. a uh, wash and cure station. And typically the washing, once you've completed the print, you take it off and put it in isopropyl alcohol to wash off all that extra resin. But then if you're like me and you're impatient and you don't want to wait uh, and sit it in front of the sun for a number of hours, you can get UV lights that will essentially flash and cure it because what's actually happening below here is there's an LCD screen and it's causing, it's it's curing the layer piece by piece as opposed to that filament that's okay. being melted onto it. So I've never seen uh, pieces made so intricately like this, even this Eiffel Tower. It's, it's pretty amazing. And well, I'm not going to break it, but oh, I can bend it a little bit, but not too much but I'm not going to snap it on you because it looks so <laughs> awesome. It looks like it took a while to do that. Now you did bring, uh, just uh, Kelvin did bring some pieces that were made on uh, FDM 
the 3D printer and the resin printer to compare them. So you have some here. Yeah. So looking at it first glance, this FDM piece has a little bit of uh, paint on it just to give it a little bit of uh, a reflection so that you can see some, some of the mold lines. Uh, particularly, there's a little bit of fold as you go through and you can kind of ever so slightly see where the nozzle has gone through for each particular layer. Right. With this, it is so minor in terms of on the, the resin printer, on the resin printer yeah. that the mold lines are almost invisible. And unless you were using, um, you know, going to paint this and start using special maybe brush techniques yeah. for, uh, you know, miniature paintings and things <laughs> like that, uh, you wouldn't really be able to tell that there were mold lines there. So you mentioned min miniature paintings. Up here we have a figurine that uh, I guess if you're into small miniatures, uh, so that would be a perfect example. It almost looks like something you'd buy at a store that would cost quite a bit. And then you paint it up and you'd have something highly detailed. Yeah, so uh, I'm into tabletop gaming. Uh, I think now is the time where a lot of people uh, in the past, they've played with uh, miniatures but haven't had the ability to create their own. And with resin 3D printing, there it just opens a plethora of, of opportunities for people to be able to create their own whether they want to design them with the software or um, in this particular case uh, a patreon or being able to purchase them online um, to create their own little armies or chess pieces uh, or so forth so you have some resin uh, and you can get it in different colors i would presume yep and they'll just give you that so how much would an item like that cost so this particular resin is uh, eco-friendly resin. Uh, it has less of an odor, uh, is a little bit more envir environmentally conscious. Uh, this, I think, went for about $30 Canadian. Yeah, Canadian. Let's kind of keep that there, the Canadian. So that's not much. That's like $2 American. Uh, and we've still got a little bit left in this, and we've been printing for the last couple. I think we went through about seven or eight prints. Uh, with a full plate of, of pieces being coming okay, so it's not it's not an expensive endeavor at all. No, to get into this and uh, um, this unit, I know I have a little chart over here. The reason that this unit is so popular, or what what they're so proud of, is as you mentioned that LED underneath or whatever you said your screen here. They say they do something amazing with the laser light. Now you've used other resin printers. You own one. Yeah. Uh, did you notice anything amazing? Uh, to be honest, it was uh, the one thing I also love about 3D printing yeah. or uh, resin 3D printing is it's fairly easy to plug and play in yeah. terms of uh, you've got the setup being able to, as long as you've calibrated your initial pull down with the build plate, right. you should be okay. We'll get into this. So anybody who's watched this long and wants to buy something like this, uh, we'll tell you what's amazing about it. It's got a touch screen, it's over five inches in, in width. Uh, you said it's plug and play. I'm reading over here. They said that it's Wi-Fi cloud based. So there's an app you can use to monitor. So when you have something running, you can look at your phone with an app and you can see the progress. So you don't have to stick around and stare at it like watching paint dry or anything like that. To be personally honest, I also like to every once in a while to take a peek in. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's one of those things that when you've got it going, it's okay. a, a little fun thing. Yeah. Having that phone app is great. Um, uh, but yeah, I, th I think it depends on the person and sometimes if you're a little more particular and want to watch it uh, make its way through. I will say though that they do have a, a great feature with the USB that okay. when you've plugged your USB in and you've chosen your print and pressed, I would like to print this. So we'll just back up for a sec. So when you say put your USB in, so you're talking oh. an STL file or something? Uh, that actually, I actually, Or what are they called? It's, it's, well, you're right, STL files, but with this particular piece, uh, in most 3D printing, you have to put it into a slicer, okay. which will slice down the various layers. Uh, this particular uh, uh, piece, so the Hallett One uh, 3D resin printer, has uh, lychee or okay. uh, their own proprietary, I think it's the Hallett box. Uh, that they And will, it's all free? You just download yeah, it? Th those would come with the, the product. Okay. Uh, that will slice the file into what needs to be used for the printer. And you put that on a USB stick and stick it in the front. And if you have booted up and you click on the files, it will have it on there. Mm -hmm. And you'll go down to the piece that you want. When you press it, it actually downloads that particular file onto the machine. So you can take your USB out and while it's printing, put your next work on your next file, okay. whether, you know, what pieces you want to slice and so forth. So you can go on places like Thingiverse or whatever, grab any item you want, then run it through that slicer you talked about, put it on the USB, stick it in, and you're all good. 
Yep. Well, that sounds pretty easy. See, I know nothing and I still know just a little bit more than nothing. I'm learning this. I don't own a 3D printer or a resin printer because I have no space in here, as my nephew Kelvin will tell you. First thing he noticed when he walked in here, I remember this place being bigger. <laughs> Not anymore. Uh, so the last question I have for you then is you've used this with your father and you've created lots of stuff and you since you're a guy who you know you own a resin printer and you've used uh, the other 3d type of printers what are your thoughts do you have it uh, i'll ask you name two really good points about this printer or well, three good points and one bad so one of the things that i particularly liked is uh there's some brackets back here that act as guiders for your uh your resin vat it makes it a lot easier trying to find the right spot when you're mounting it because precision is key as you might find out with a lot of uh, 3D printing. Um, just having that there so that you can quickly slide it in and put it in place is quite great. Uh, as I mentioned before, with the uh, with the, the LCD screen and being able to plug in your USB and, and play around with a lot, uh, there's also extra fans on this uh, that was actually quite a, a welcome surprise. So there's a fan up top here mm -hmm. and some fans internally that just helps uh, alleviate some of the smell. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can smell it a little bit, but there's a little no, bit. No, I don't a, smell anything. There's, there can tend to be a little bit of a resiny smell. So okay. it, it also depends on the type of resin that you uh, get. And because resin is technically a, a, a toxic material, uh, it's always wise to wear a mask and gloves when handling it, especially. You tell me this now, my face is this <laughs> close to the resin and this. But when you're putting it back in the bottle, when you're done with your 3D printing, yeah. you've got to use uh, a number of pieces to, to put it back in. And, and that can be you know, a little bit of a messier yeah. uh, ordeal as opposed to, to wear gloves. <laughs> yeah. I warned Kelvin ahead of time that uh, maybe think about something, you know, something not so great that he doesn't like about it. That could be better. I think there's, there'd probably be two things that, you know, I think there's benefits and, and uh, there's reasons towards the design. The first one is uh, these particular uh, handles that you can screw on and screw off. Uh, there's nothing preventing them from you potentially scraping it across your LCD screen just on the bottom. So you have to be particularly careful when taking this out. Oh, or this whole tray comes off. Then. This whole tray will come off and that's, oh. that's... Oh, and then these little metal things stick out the bottom. Yeah, and they, oh, okay. they screw in. So if you take this out and then take it back in, and I, I think we've got it loose enough that we can yeah. probably lift it. If you're not screen. careful enough, you might scrape it with. Yeah, screw, I see what you mean. Yeah, um, especially if it slides down. So yeah, exactly. ideally, uh, if there was something so that it was preventing, whether it was like a clamp that held it in place or, or so forth, that would probably be ideal. I'm not going to put this back on there just this moment because I'm worried about scratching it. <laughs> uh, and the second piece would probably just be that this here, the, yeah, the top, I'll just put it on top, is the UV uh, sort of protector. For the, for the case, I believe with uh, Creality, there's a little sticker in the back that prevents it from running unless the top is on, okay. sort of as a safety precaution. Uh, I was able to run this without the top on and... Uh, I think... So you have all the light coming in from all around? Yeah, and, and just if like you've got... We all have animals and, and things like that that might be playing around with it. Ideally, I think it would be, it would be great if there was something that would mm -hmm. prevent it from running so that you don't you know yeah some little latch mechanism like on a even like on a coffee pot when that's down now yes. you can run the coffee and get your coffee <laughs> instead of having it explode in your face kelvin's had this for just over a, a week i believe and uh, been playing with it and it sounds like i don't know would you, would you give it a thumbs up yeah absolutely i think <laughs> if you're new to 3d printing and want to try something that um can create these you know, beautiful miniatures, uh, maybe you're into tabletop gaming, or you just want a 3D printer and want to play around with it. It's a great opportunity to test it around without having to have too much of a, uh, uh, I would say, a particular aspect or the ability to fine tune things like you may have seen uh, with my dad who uh, uh, gets pretty in depth with drones and uh, FDM printers. Ah, okay. Well, that's great. Well, if you enjoyed this video, guys, uh, please give it a thumbs up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put links to this product below. I'm also going to show you exactly what came in the box. This is going to follow next portion. And then after that, it's bye-bye uh, time. So uh, thanks for watching this video. Kelvin again, thanks again. It's been a pleasure having you uh, check the stuff out 
I might have you back to do some more cool things from far away. Kelvin lives in Winnipeg, uh, so he's just out here visiting, and I put him the task to, uh, to check out a, a printer. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you have comments, post them below. I'll let Kelvin uh, monitor the comments because I know nothing about this, and he will uh, respond to them. All right, bye. This is the box your printer comes in, and when you open the box, the first thing you're going to see is, well, the power cable and the user manual. Then you're going to find your thumb drive, scraper, brush, Allen keys, filter, warranty card, and then the printer itself. And here are some of the specifications written on the back. If you have questions about this printer, just leave a comment below, and either Nelson or Kelvin will get back to you. Thanks for watching.